sing, and um, the, the words will be up in your slides, but the song will also have the exact number in the hymnal if you'd rather use a hymnal, okay? So if you want to just wait for a second, we're going to have uh, Zach coming forward, and he's going to have the helper up here, and they're going to light our Advent candle for the starting because tonight we'll be using that middle candle as we declare our light and show our light for the world. So, Zach, you're on. Am I on? There we go. Okay. Good evening. Merry almost Christmas. Uh, this evening, Jason is actually coming to help us tonight to light the candles. And um, if you're not familiar, Jason is actually coming. He says he's, he's going to actually remind us what each of the candles mean. Jason, do you remember what the candles mean? Did your dad tell you? Ah. Uh. Yeah? So, so, uh, there's four candles that we lit so far, Jason. Do you remember? Hold off on the hold off on the lighter just yet. Jason, Jason, leave the lighter here for just a second. Okay. There were four candles. Do you remember what the candles meant? Yeah? Okay. Tell me what the first candle meant. I said it's candle meant. Okay. <laughs> so the first candle was hope, and the second candle is peace, and the third candle is joy. The fourth candle is love. And the last candle is the Christ candle because that's when Christ was born. And that's why we light it. Yeah. Okay. So, Jason, you're going to help me light these candles. Ready? You remember how to do it? You need my help? I'll give you a hand. Okay. There it is. Okay. Start over here. Almost. That one's hard. Too much wax. There we go. All right. This one here. You might have to come over here and come around the table a little bit. There we go. Let's get this one. And almost. All right. And now this one's a little tall for you. Oh, I'll help. Here we go. That's the Christ candle. Good job, Jason. Round of applause for Jason. I'll leave, I'll take it. Thanks. <laughs> you can head back to your seat. Thanks, Jason. So uh, now that the candles are lit, uh, there's a scripture for the Christ candle that I wanted to read for you. It says, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And that's out of Isaiah 9, 6. And I'll just pray, and then uh, we'll turn it over to Pastor Gary. God of hope, peace, joy, and love, we thank you that you sent Christ, that Mary and Joseph had the courage to obediently follow you, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that you would give us the courage and the hope and the strength and the peace and the joy and the love that is necessary for us to go into this world with courage to boldly proclaim you. And we pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Okay, we'd like tonight to be kind of like just caroling, so let's stand if we would with me. We're going to we're sing three of the familiar carols as we uh, enter this morning, uh, this evening. Oh, come all you faithful, we'll start with. But please stand with me if you would. sing loud for everybody else to hear you. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. Oh, come let us of Bethlehem.
above the deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light the hope and the years of all the years is born of Mary and gathered all above. Watch o'er to sleep the angels keep their watch of wandering love. The morning star together proclaim the holy birth. The And hark the herald, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled, joyful ye nations rise, join the Please remain standing as we uh, read some scripture. Hello. All right, we're going to read Luke 2, 1 through 14. Uh, we're going to read it together. So the left side, if you want to do the uneven numbers, the ones on the right, the even numbers, uh, the verses are in your little pamphlets, or unless you want to open up the Bible. Once again, it's Luke 2, 1 through 14. All right, let's begin. Now, in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus, that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all the people were on their way to register for the census, each to his own city. Now Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was betrothed to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock at night. And the angel of the Lord suddenly stood near them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And so the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel multitude of the heavenly army of angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among people with whom he is pleased. Standing. We're going to be singing two verses of uh, Angels We Have Heard High with the thing we just read about, and then we'll sing a couple verses of Way in the Manger. And if on the Way in the Manger, if a couple of the kid, children want to come up and kind of lead that, there are some actions. And in fact, if some of you adults want to come up and lead, help the kids lead, uh, that would be great uh, for the actions of Away in the Manger. So two verses start with Angels We Have Heard on High. Angels 
to well away in the manger. Does any of the children want to come up? A couple parents. Show us how the actions go. Sing two verses away in the manger. Let's start, everybody. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky look down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus sleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the boardly awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. Thy love, the Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and save of the Savior till morning is thine. Okay, let's give the kids a hand of applause. Very good. Thank you. You may be seated. You know, I often do with uh, the, I also have the kids up here on uh, Christmas Eve. We didn't plan on having them up because of the, uh, the way in which the uh, service was planned outdoors. Uh, but they could have come up because the story I have today kind of, I think they'll be pretty interested in. But uh, does anybody know who the real Santa Claus is? I mean, I mean, the original Santa Claus. Who was who the original Santa Claus was? Somebody back there. Go ahead. Do you know, Kenzie? St. Nicholas. Okay, very good. Who could tell me anything about St. Nicholas? Anybody can tell me anything about St. Nicholas? Okay, right heck here. He punched a heretic. Okay. <laughs> what else? Can you tell me, MJ? He gave presents to the orphanage. That's very close to what the original one did. That's right. Anybody know anything else about him? Go ahead. Joey, what do you know? Come, come up here, Joey, please, please. I want you to hear this story. Can you turn this microphone on, guys? Come on up here. Tell, tell, them, what you, tell them your story. He's exactly right. Um, so, I, th there's a story that St. Nicholas was very rich, uh, 
and there was a man who had no money uh, for his daughter and wanted his daughters to get married, but he had no money for a dowry, so, and he wouldn't take m money. So St. Nicholas had to be very sneaky, and there was an open window, and he would throw a little bag of money in. And the girls had their socks it, hanging to dry, and the money landed in the socks, and that's as much as I Give him a hand. I'm impressed, yo. How, how many of you knew that part of the story? Okay, yeah, he was a, he was, actually, if you want to call him by his real name, it was Pastor Nick, okay? He was what, I, he was to his church in Myra, which was in Turkey, what I am to this church. He was the pastor. Back in that day, they often called them bishops. Okay, so he was the Bishop of Myra, and that was around the, the year, I think it was 280 or so, that he was there. And it's true that uh, there was somebody in the church, let me see if I get the date. Yeah, 280 AD. And um, he was actually a fiery defender of the faith in many ways, and uh, the story that Mike said about punching the heretics probably right. In fact, it says he, d he defied many of the edicts, which he considered anti-Christian, and he wound up spending a lot of years in prison until Constantine came to the throne, in 313, and he actually made Christianity a legal religion, and that uh, kind of made, uh, you know, uh, Saint Nick uh, took him off the hook for some of the stuff that uh, he was proponent was he was proponent of. So Saint Nick, that's that, and that's how the story came through. Uh, three lady, three girls. Uh, the father didn't have a dowry for them, and of course they needed a dowry. And a lot of th times, those kind of girls would go into prostitution if they didn't have a way to support themselves. And so Saint Nick uh, would go up, threw some money through a window. And legend has it, whether it's true or not, that it happened to land on one of their socks, and which is where we get the Christ putting the stuff in Christmas stockings today. And he did that, to my knowledge, he went back and did it for each of the three girls. And so that was St. Nick, a pastor of Myra whose uh, uh, reputation has lived on today in what oftentimes we call Santa Claus. But I have another story I'd like to tell you about, and this is, this is one of my favorite stories. Maybe you've heard it a few times, and maybe you haven't, but um, it always bears repeating. And I think as we think of Christmas, I think this story is such a great one. We talked about Away in the Manger and, uh, you know, the inn and so forth, and this is called Trouble at the Inn, Okay. It comes from guideposts uh, back in, 19, in 2014. This one particular one was posted, but I've been using it for many, many years, so uh, I'm not sure of the original date of the uh, one that we have. But it says, for, near, for years now, whatever Christmas pageants are, whenever Christmas pageants are talked about in a certain little town in the Midwest, someone is assured to mention, mention the name of Wallace Perling. By the way, how many of you saw our Christmas uh, pageant on uh, the Internet from the other day? You see that? Okay, you need to look at We Care 2. Go on the We Care 2 site, um, and I think Katie posted uh, a copy of it in her uh, Facebook, but we had all of our We Care 2 kids put on a Christmas pageant for the parents. And we had the whole, they, they did it outside, so it was outside, and all the parents came, and it was, they were all standing out there watching the, the great Christmas pageant. So um, I have a copy of it, too, but I haven't got it on Facebook. I can't figure out how to get it on We Care 2 site. But it'll, I'll put mine up and look at Katie's and look at some of the pictures. But at any rate, so they had this, this uh, Christmas pageant in the Midwest. Wally's performance in one annual production of the Tivity play has slipped into the realm of legend. But the old-timers who were in the audience that night never tired of recalling exactly what happened. Wally was nine that year, and in the second grade, though he should have been in the fourth grade. Most people in town knew that he had difficulty keeping up. He was big and awkward, slow in movement, and slow in mind. Still, Wally was very well liked by the other children in his class, all of whom were smaller than he, though the boys had trouble hiding their irritation when Wally would ask to play ball with them or any game, for that matter, in which the winning was important. <laughs> are identified very closely with this in our family. They'd find a way to keep him out, but Wally would hang around anyway, not sulking, just hoping. He was a helpful boy, always willing and smiling, and the protector, paradoxically, of the underdog. If the older boys chased the younger ones away, it would be Wally who'd say, can't they stay? They're no bother. Wally fancied the idea of being a shepherd in the Christmas pageant, but the play's director, Miss Lombard, assigned him a more important role. After all, she reasoned, the innkeeper didn't have too many lines, and Wally's sighs would make his refusal of lodging to Joseph much more forceful. And so it happened 
that the usual large partisan attendance gathered for the town's yearly extravagances of crooks and creches, of beards, crowns, halos, and a whole stage full of squeaky voices. No one on stage or off was more caught up in the magic of the night than Wallace Perling. They said later that he stood in the wings and watched the performance with such fascination that Mrs. Lombard had to make sure he didn't wander on stage before his cue. Then the time came when Joseph appeared, slowly, tenderly guiding Mary to the door of the inn. Joseph knocked hard on the wooden door, set into the painted backdrop. Wally, the innkeeper, was there waiting. What do you want? Wally said, swinging the door open with a brusque gesture. We seek lodging. Seek it elsewhere, Wally spoke vigorously. The inn is filled. Sir, we have asked everywhere in town. We have traveled far and are very weary. There is no room in the inn for you. Wally looked properly stern. Please, good innkeeper, this is my wife Mary. She is heavy with child and needs a place to rest. Surely you must have some small corner for her. She is so tired. Now, for the first time, the innkeeper relaxed his stiff stance and looked down at Mary. With that, there was a long pause, long enough to make the audience a bit tense with embarrassment. No, be gone, the prompter whispered. No, Wally repeated automatically. Be gone. Joseph sadly placed his arm around Mary, and Mary laid her, laid her head upon her husband's shoulder, and the two of them started to move away. The innkeeper did not return inside the inn, however. Wally stood there on the doorway, watching the forlorn couple. His mouth was open, his brow creased with concern, his eyes filling unmistakably with tears. And suddenly, this crisp pageant became different from all the others. Don't go, Joseph, Wally called out. Bring Mary back. And Wallace Perling's face grew into a bright smile. You can have my room. Some people thought that the pageant had been ruined, yet there were others, many, many others, who considered it the most Christmas of all Christmas pageants they had ever seen. I thought that was such an appropriate story for tonight on Christmas Eve, because the real question is, do we have room for Jesus? Some people are so busy with their lifestyle, so busy with the presents, so busy with Santa Claus, so busy with the Christmas tree, and, and some of us, myself included, fit right into that, don't we? Christmas is such a busy season, and we say, oh, when it's over, I can finally relax. And yet for all of us, the question comes, is our heart ready to be open for Jesus Christ? Not just at Christmas, but all year long. Many people in a Christmas Eve crowd, normally where the church is filled when they're not in a pandemic, you know, and a lot of people come and that's the only night they ever show up at church. Only time. Because really when it comes to their heart, there just really isn't room for Jesus. And today, as we have this shortened, abbreviated Christmas service, I just want to ask us to, and ourselves to evaluate do we have room for Jesus? Are we like the original innkeeper who said no room? Or are we like Wally who looks on to Jesus and says, Wally? And Wally says, Jesus, come into my heart. I'll give you room. So this Christmas, whether it be tomorrow, I hope you'll read the Christmas story at some point tomorrow. And if you're here or if you're on Facebook Live watching us, or if you see this, story, this service recorded at some later point, I'd like you to consider that Romans 3.23 says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death, and we've, uh, my cousin just passed away a couple days ago. Um, suffered from ALS. Had another cousin over in England that died a couple weeks ago. Uh, you know, my sister passed away a year ago. Death is reality. It takes place in our lives. And yet... The wage of the sin is death. Each one of us will die, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For those of us who are Christians, death is merely a change of address. We don't like to get, leave people go, but Christmas is the time when we each need to consider, 
is Jesus the one that we open up our heart to? And if you on Facebook land or someone here has never opened up your heart to Jesus and really allowed him to come in and take control of your life, he says, I've come and I've died on the cross for your sins. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. All you need to do is accept what Jesus Christ did on the cross as payment for your sins and welcome into your heart. And the Bible says he'll turn you into a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen? Amen. Let's uh, sing, with that kind of a response, let's sing Joy to the World, and then I'll give you some, inter uh, some instructions and we'll have our candle lighting ceremony. So let's all stand as we sing. Because we're going to go to our uh, to our uh, solid our solid night and our candle lighting. So, what I'd like to do is instruct us, if you would, please. Um, let's all um, move to the side around this church while we still have the lights on. Uh, play, put your masks on while you're moving, if you would. And then, when find a place kind of socially distant. So, if, if uh, families can stay together, so families stay together. If you're single, just to find a place and. Um, Come on in, uh, uh, you know, maybe if, if each person at the end of the family extends your arms, yeah, you know that you know, you've got the proper distance between each other. If you are at home, uh, why don't you turn out all your lights and, uh, at home and get, uh, get your candle ready to be lit. And um, I'm going to ask, uh, we're going to sing the song, um, uh, Silent Night, and I'm going to need to find my words here. Can I have one of the programs? I, I misplaced one. Is there an extra program out there? So I'll go up the Josh, you can, you can stand up here. Okay. And you want to, uh, can you turn that off for me, that light too? And tonight as we do this, um, Janet, come on over here. You can stand right over, Janet, let's sit, turn right over there. There's an open spot right there for you, okay? And... I'm going to light the candle, and we'll pass, as I light it, I'll pass it on to this side and also to this side, and each one of you light the candles as they go around, and um, Zach, if you could also pull these back here, if you would, please. Uh, we're going to sing Silent Night, and as, as Zach pointed out earlier, the center candle is the Christ candle, and uh, tonight's the night that we celebrate his birth. He comes tomorrow, and so as we uh, light this candle, uh, it represents Jesus Christ, the light of the world, who's going to spread his light, and we are a symbol of that light as we spread it around here. So, um, Marion, could you close that door behind you, please, for a second? Just pull that. In silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. I think we know the words of that. If you have your program, the words are here. So let me light the center candle here. Okay, but wait a second, Josh. You can light it from mine. Ready? Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round John Virgin, mother and child. so tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, oh, 
Shepherds quake at the side. Glory stream from heaven afar. Heavenly hosts sing hallelujah. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face. With the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, silent night, holy light, wondrous star, lend thy light with the angels. Let us sing, Alleluia, to our King, Christ the Savior is born, Christ the Savior is born. Let's go back and sing just the first verse. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round John virgin, mother and child. Only infant so tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly Hold your candle up for just a second as we remember that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And he talks about us being lights in darkness and shedding our light. In fact, this little light of mine comes from that very passage. So as we hold these candles up, may it represent the light of Jesus Christ shining forth not only in our lives, but also in the darkness. And in the darkness, the candle shines even brighter. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for coming to earth on Christmas Day. We thank you for being our Savior and being born to die in order to take away our sins. May you bless each one that's here tonight at our service. May you bless each one on Facebook that's watching us or those that might watch later on on the live program, our, our recording. And we just ask that you'll give us each a wonderful day tomorrow as we celebrate your birth. And as we look to a new year, new year may you allow us to be the light of in other people's lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas. Okay, you can blow out your lights. Don't blow too hard. We don't want the wax all over the carpet, okay? And then there is a spot out. If you like to keep your candle, you may keep it and take it home with you. If you'd like to re leave it here, there will be a box out there. You can just leave it there as you go, okay? Let's uh, turn the lights back on if we could back there. And uh, um, 
so nobody trips on the way out. And Sean, if you go ahead and start some of that mu beautiful music as we leave today, that would be great. God bless you all. Thank you. 